Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math lesson today. Here's the problem we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be continuing on, just like I did last week with a video about finding the derivative of a function that has square roots in it using the limit definition of a derivative. So that limit definition is basically this formula here. It essentially says that the derivative of your function f is just going to be the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And the function that we're going to be finding the derivative of is right here, f of x equals 2 divided by the square root of x. So let's jump into it. The first thing I recommend doing whenever you're finding the derivative of any function using this limit definition is to first kind of figure out what f of x plus h is. So to figure that out, all you have to do is go to your function f of x and take all of your x's and replace it with x plus h. So in this case, we only have one x and it's here within the square root. All we have to do to find f of x plus h is replace x with x plus h. So that would give us f of x plus h is 2 over the square root of x plus h instead of just the square root of x. So that's what f of x plus h is. So now all we really have to do is just go to this limit or this uh, limit definition of a derivative and replace these two pieces here, f of x plus h and f of x with f of x plus h and f of x. So f of x plus h we now know is 2 divided by the square root of x plus h, so we'll replace that. And then we know f of x is 2 divided by the square root of x, so we'll make that substitution as well. So now we have something that we can actually work with here. So now what we're going to do is go through kind of the typical process of how you would kind of manipulate this limit whenever you have a function that has square roots in it. And this is going to be a pretty common uh, kind of pattern that you're going to see. And, you know, notice based on basically the formula, we're always going to end up with some sort of square root thing minus some sort of square root thing. And whenever you have something like that, the easiest thing to do is multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by the same thing but with a plus instead of a minus. So the reason why we do that is it kind of builds off of difference of square. So difference of square says if we have two things being multiplied together where they are a plus b times a minus b. So essentially that just means, you know, these a's are going to be the same. It doesn't really matter what they are. In this case, you could imagine a as 2 divided by the square root of x plus h and b as 2 over the square root of x. So if you have a plus b times a minus b, that's going to multiply out to a squared minus b squared, right? So applying that same principle here, if we multiply both the top and the bottom of this fraction by 2 over the square root of x plus h plus 2 over the square root of x, that's going to leave us with this term squared minus this term squared. Right, so now this is what we have on the numerator. We just have this term squared minus this term here squared. And then in order to make sure that this step here is actually equivalent to what we came from, we need to multiply both the top and the bottom of that fraction by what I just said, this whole thing, with, but with a positive sign there. So doing that will leave us with h times all that, 2 over the square root of x plus h plus 2 over the square root of x. So the reason why we had to do this in the first place, kind of going back to this, this step here, imagine trying to evaluate this limit. You know, usually the easiest way to kind of start trying to evaluate a limit is to just simply plug in whatever this, this variable here is approaching in for that variable. But if we just plug in zero for h into this function here, we're gonna get zero on the denominator. So we're gonna be dividing by zero, which is never allowed. You can never divide by zero. So as a result, we have to get a little tricky with rearranging things. So that's why we had to multiply by the, the positive, you know, the conjugate of that numerator so that we might be able to get something that can cancel out this h on the denominator. Because if we can do that, we'll be able to just plug in zero for h and get some fraction that doesn't cause you to divide by zero. So that's our general goal here, is we're trying to manipulate the numerator of this function so that we can pull an h out of it. And if we can do that, we can cancel that with our h down here. 
going forward, we don't really need to worry about our denominator for a little while. We just need to try and manipulate our numerator. So let's start by just kind of simplifying what we have, because obviously we have these, you know, these things being squared. We could actually square these fractions and see what that comes out to. So let's do that. So if we actually square these fractions, essentially all that's going to do is square the numerator and then square the denominator. So two squared is going to give us four. And then the square root of something squared, the squared and the square root are just going to cancel. So we're just going to get X plus H on our denominator. And then we're going to have minus two squared on the numerator, which is again four. And then the square root of X squared, again, the square root and the square just cancel and we just get X on our denominator. So you can see our numerator actually simplifies quite nicely. So again, we're just going to keep our denominator as is. And now we kind of have this situation where we have a couple of fractions being added or subtracted in the numerator. And remember, our general goal is to get something that we can pull an H out of our numerator so that it will cancel with this H down here. So usually when you're in a situation like that, the kind of the easiest way to get there typically would be to somehow try and combine these two fractions in the numerator so that you just have basically one big fraction in the numerator and then you can maybe be able to pull an H out of that that will be able to cancel with this H. So let's try doing that. So essentially our goal here is to combine these two fractions into one single fraction. So to do that, they need to have the same denominator, right? If you're adding or subtracting fractions, if they have the same denominator, then you can just add or subtract their numerator to combine them into one fraction. So to get them to have the same denominator, all we have to do is multiply this fraction by x over x and this fraction by x plus h over x plus h. So if we multiply this one by x over x, and if we multiply this one by x plus h over x plus h, that's going to give us two fractions that both have the same denominator, right? The denominator for both is going to be x plus h times x and then x times x plus h, which is the same. So what we can do to combine those now is just subtract their numerators from each other. So that's going to give us four times x minus four times x plus h and make sure you put parentheses around this x plus h here, right? We have to multiply x plus h times this whole thing. So the whole x plus h needs to be in parentheses. And that's going to be all over x times x plus h. So this is now just the numerator of our fraction here. We still need to keep this whole denominator as is. So now we're starting to get somewhere. What we can do now is just kind of continue working just in our numerator here and we can simplify this out a bit. So we have this four that could be distributed to both the X and the H. So doing that will give us four X and then minus four H. And now you can see we have a four X minus a four X. So these are actually gonna cancel out now. So our numerator only has a negative four H, right? So now the probably the best way to think about what we have here in order to um, you know, kind of help simplify this a bit more is we basically have this fraction within the numerator of another fraction. So what we can do is break this down into just having a couple of fractions um, kind of side by side instead of stacking them on top of each other, um, which will just kind of help make things easier to move around. So what I mean by that is let's keep our numerator as is, right? So we're just going to have this 4x and this 4x canceled. So we just have negative 4h on the numerator. The denominator is going to be x times x plus h. And then the thing you want to remember, dividing by something is the same as multiplying by the recipro reciprocal of that thing. So what I mean by that is if we have this numerator here divided by this whole denominator, Instead of dividing by this whole thing, we can instead multiply by the reciprocal of this, which means multiply by one over all this stuff. Right, so now we've kind of manipulated our fractions so that we just have one level of fraction. We don't have a fraction within a fraction because that's kind of a pain to deal with generally. Dealing with something like this is a lot more straightforward because 
you know, now we have, you know, if we wanted to, we could just combine this into one fraction by just multiplying the numerator across and multiplying the denominator across. But before we do that, notice now we have an H in our numerator and we have an H in our denominator. So now these H's are actually gonna cancel out, which was exactly what our goal was. So now let's see what that leaves us with. Now with those H's canceling, our numerator is just gonna be negative four times one, which is just negative four. And our denominator is gonna be X times X plus H times all this stuff in parentheses here. Two over the square root of X plus H plus two over the square root of X. Okay, so now we have this fraction, which, you know, does still look fairly complicated, but remember, we accomplished our goal of canceling out that H on the denominator. So now that we've canceled that out, the next logical question to ask is, can we now evaluate this limit by just simply plugging H or plugging zero in for H? So let's think about what would happen if we did that. As long as we don't divide by zero anywhere by doing that, that's usually going to be the easiest way to evaluate a limit like this. So if we go into this, this fraction here and replace all of our H's with zeros, all that's gonna do is it's gonna make this X plus H become X plus zero, which is just X, right? So that doesn't really have any issues because having an X down here is completely fine. And then the only other place we have an H is right here, which again, we have X plus H, which X plus zero is just X. So plugging in zero for H, evaluating that limit, now we don't have any issues with dividing by zero. Now we don't have any more H's to deal with. We just have some function of X, which now we can simplify to figure out what our derivative is. So just to simplify a bit, if we have X times X, that's the same as X squared. So these two terms here are gonna simplify down to X squared. And then if we have these two fractions here, which have the same denominator, they both have a denominator of the square root of X, we can add these fractions together by keeping the denominator the same and then simply adding their numerator. So two plus two is four, so we're gonna get four over the square root of x. So we just have negative four over x squared times four over the square root of x, which we could simplify by thinking about the fact that the square root, taking the square root of something, is the same as raising that thing to the one half power. So by having the square root of x, that's the same as x to the one half, and then the fact that we have x to the one half on the denominator being multiplied by x squared here, basically those powers are just gonna subtract. So this is gonna subtract from that. And it's because it's on a denominator instead of a numerator. We could also think of this x squared being multiplied to this fraction here by putting that in the numerator here. So that's equivalent. This one half power is gonna subtract from this two power, just leaving us with three halves, right? 2 minus 1 half is 3 halves. So this whole term here is just going to simplify to 4x to the 3 halves. And then we have a 4 on the denominator, a 4 on the numerator. Those are just going to cancel. And we're just going to have negative 1 over x to the 3 halves, which is the same as negative x to the negative 3 halves which again is the derivative of our function f. And if you were to go back to our original function, which remember was two over the square root of x, which is the same as two times x to the negative one half, if we were to just use the power rule to find the derivative of this function, we would get exactly this. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like and subscribe to the channel. That's a great way to help support the channel so I can keep making more videos like this. Thank you and see you next time.